Hi, it's Anne. I have such an invitation for you. We're gonna look through my trash. We are literally gonna look through my trash. I've been mulling this over for a little while and I decided, I, for, it, it turns out I need a new journal. I need to have a journal where I can, a real utility journal where I can keep track of my of my videos what I publish what I want to publish just ideas I just need a I just need a notebook to keep all of those things together so naturally I would make a junk journal and I decided to um, challenge myself to collect all of the trash that that Dan and I generated as a household or that I just sort of encountered in life um, keep all that trash for a week and make a journal out of just that stuff, stuff that is truly trash. And uh, don't worry, there's nothing gross in there. I don't have old chicken bones or coffee grounds or anything uh, or, or anything like that. Uh, but uh, it was kind of amazing. It was it was sort of a twofold thing. One, I wanted to you know have all this stuff together, and number two, I really kind of wanted to take a look out of what was the usable stuff um, that I really literally was pulling out of my trash bin every week. I've been saving stuff from the trash for quite a long time. That's how I got started junk journaling in the first place. It was <laughs> it was early in the pandemic, and I had done all the crafts uh, for months uh, months on end. And I had heard about junk journaling, and I thought, gosh, I have all this stuff in my house and Amazon packaging because we were getting lots of Amazon stuff then, and uh, just stuff that came in the mail. And I thought, why don't I try using some of that stuff? And it was amazing how much our actual uh, um, uh, amount of stuff that we put out on the curb to be picked up, uh, even in the recycling bin, went down. But I wanted to really kind of narrow the focus down to one week's worth of, of trash and then share that with you. So anyway, I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this into several uh, parts because you do not want to watch me make the whole thing. It would take days and days because I would do a lot of hemming and hawing and there would be a lot of exciting footage of me going... Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, I'm not going to put you through that. But I thought let's just start out and see what our raw materials are uh, for this project. This is one week's worth of um, of trash. Um, I decided a week ago today that I was going to do it. So as I film this, that week is up and uh, and I'm ready to kind of go through. I think that the first task in hand uh, for me is to identify journaling space because this needs to be a real working journal. This is not a scrapbook of, you know, like pictures of sugar cookies or anything like that. Although that will be part of it, I'm quite sure. Um, but I need a lot of space to write. I need a lot of space to, you know, doodle and draw arrows and schedule things and draw little charts and schedules and all that. And this is something that is going to be used only by me. Um, it doesn't have to be beautiful, but I do want it to be... Um, uh, I do want it to be useful and uh, I want it to be something that I feel good about picking up every day as I plan my videos. Um, I didn't have anything uh, like that because I never really thought I would be doing videos at the pace I'm doing them right now. But anyway, that's that's another story. So my first task, and we're going to do just a little bit of this today, is to identify writing space. And I think most of that is going to come from my from my junk mail. Uh, let's open a few things here. Uh, I think that there is a lot of usable writing space. Whoops, too close. Uh, usable writing space on um, on the insides of envelopes. I frequently um, uh, frequently will use those. Let me get out of my scissors. So as I get started on this, I'm going to be doing a lot of this. A lot of just opening up and a lot of switching to better cutting equipment because that, uh, that blade was a little dull. See, this is stuff we throw away every day. And even in our junk journal life, you know, we'll use it for pockets and all that. But do we ever think about using this for journaling space? It's white. I'd rather have it coffee dyed. But this is a utility journal, and I'm not going to worry about transforming um, the, um, uh, the the writing space into something really vintagey looking. This is going to be a utility. This is going to be you know stuff I I can use. So I'm I'm accepting the fact that I'm going to have this is probably going to be a tall, slim sort of uh, journal, and I'm going to have a lot of pages like this where I have just opened things up. 
I'm trying to think about how I can make better use of um, of the pages that do have things printed on. And I've got a couple of ideas, but I want to play with them uh, for a while uh, so that, you know, again, you don't see me going, eh, you know, I don't know. Um, I want to use only my trash, only my trash for this. I am allowing myself a little bit of grace though, because guess what? I'm going to need to use some glue and I'm probably going to need to use needle and thread. I was thinking for a while about using my sewing machine, but I, no, I think that's, I think that's, you know, pushing the envelope a little bit too much. I want this only to be trash that has come into my life, uh, over this past week. Now, I want you to know this is really going to be legit trash too. I'm not going to do something like take my Edith Holden book and throw it in the bin and then go, oh, look, it's trash. I can use that. No, I'm not going to do that. You just have to trust me on that. I I, I appreciate uh, uh, your, your knowing. I'm, I'm not going to cross that boundary. Anyway, so we have a lot of junk mail and a lot of that stuff is going to happen. I'm going to have to identify a cover. Uh, after I've sort of sorted through my journaling space, I'm going to have to identify a cover. It might be this thing from, you know, something I ordered through the mail. It might be that. It might not be. Oh, I might use some ink, too. I'm not certain. I'm not going to do a whole lot of that. Uh, there also could be some uh, writing space that I get from the inside of this sugar bag. And... Uh, I, I didn't keep a whole lot of food stuff. It was, if it was icky or greasy, you know, I threw that away. But the sugar bag, once I opened it up, was scrupulously clean. And there's a lot of good writing space and pocket and tag space I can use here, actually on the back of the bag itself and the back of the liner. So, so this is good. I wouldn't normally have kept the sugar bag, but, um, Dan finished it up. What was he? I guess he was making some tomato sauce or something and had to add just a little bit of sugar and it happened to be the end of our sugar. Um, so anyway, in comes the sugar bag into this project. Um, we like our snacks. That'll come in useful in some way. Uh, yes, we keep it classy here, here in Portland, Oregon. This is a box of wine. If you come visit us, we will open up a box of wine for you. Uh, there's some decent cardboard in here and maybe something I can use. I don't know exactly how I'm going to use that, but I'm going to try to put it into use. And of course, from Friday Night Pizza, Wild Mike's. So this is a, 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 nice, a, a nice way to chipboard. I'll see how I can use that. I just don't know. Uh, there's um, a few other things here, just little bits of... Uh, you know, other stuff that comes in the mail, not certain how, how that can be used. Uh, print out of a recipe, you know, with a blank page, I can use that for something. Um, a flyer that came from our local, you know, senior center. Oh, look, it's bl blank on the back. Uh, a couple of, we can do a whole lot of shopping this week, but there's a couple of, couple of grocery receipts that are, uh, um, that are blank on the back. Uh, something that came about green living, more junk mail. Um, what else is over here? I kept a few things. Again, it's blank on the back. Not certain if I can use um, this food label. Uh, that might be in nice for inside of a tag. A couple of twisty ties. Have absolutely no idea if this will be uh, useful or not. One of Dan's little labels for pork shoulder because he was making sausage. Top of a, this is nice, nice and clean after I, I wiped it down. Again, I wasn't going to keep gross stuff, but uh, I thought this, this is the top of a butter tub. I thought that might be kind of fun to maybe emboss. I am going to let myself use uh, the tools I have within reason, uh, but you know, we'll, we'll see. <sighs> top of the home canned tomatoes for the tomato sauce. I sure would like to use this. I have no idea if this is anything I can use. I did sanitize it and all that. It's a little bit stained, but could this go on the front of the journal? I don't know. I, th I think it's going to be fun to challenge myself. You know, when you home can things, of course, you use the lids and the jars over and over. We've had the same ones for years, but the actual lids, you know, that have that little sealant there. You know, those are generally disposable, but are they really? I'd like to not dispose of it. Um, what else is over here? 
have a couple of these, you know, I've tried to use these before dryer sheets. I, I've never been successful in getting them to look like anything other than just dryer sheets. And it just kind of bothered me a little bit. Um, but we'll see. I might, I, I might find a use, uh, a use for them couple of snack wrappers when the little grandson was over. Can I use the Z-Bar wrapper? I do not know. Can I use the Ritz Bits? I don't know. Let's find out. Anything else interesting in here? Um, yeah. What can I say? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, this, I liked this <laughs> I wiped this down really good and sprayed it with uh, some vinegar so it is really clean. But I, I, I love the idea of maybe putting that over something. Not certain if the butter can uh, can be used. Um, can of corn that went into the soup. Look, it's blank on the inside. We could write on that. That could happen. Uh, a butter box for some baking. Um, a bag of our... Um, bagels. I don't know. I don't know. Not everything is going to go into this, uh, into this journal. Uh, but I sure I'm going to try to use as much as I can. Um, oh, look at this. <laughs> this is an actual ticket. This isn't one of those Tim Holtz tickets you have to buy. I, I was at a, an event with an actual raffle and I did keep this coupon. We got to use this ticket somewhere. That's an actual thing. Uh, I have a little bit of Amazon packaging that's uh, that's there. I had a a T-shirt that was so worn out, I'd even I'd, I'd cut it into cleaning rags, and uh, this was the hem. And I normally throw the hems away, and I thought, wow, I'm going to consider this trash. Maybe I need a closure or something like that. So anyway, so guys, there is my trash. What's going to become of it? Your guess is as good as mine. But stay tuned. Okay, so here's an update. I have assembled all of my signatures and it turns out I had enough stuff to make two journals. I'm super excited. Let me give you some of the, uh, uh, some of the highlights. Um, as I was creating this journaling space, uh, one thing I did was um, uh, if I had sheets of paper that were printed on one side and blank on the other, I just glued them face to face and perfectly legitimate journaling space there, and that'll make a really nice page. Um, the other nice thing that I found myself doing is that as I cut the envelopes open, I had envisioned, you know, just, just having this be the, the, the basis uh, of, of, of the journal oriented like this. But once I cut them open, I thought, what if I turned them this way? And I had a little bit more of a traditional page size. I, 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 I like the proportions, the aspect ratio of this one, uh, of that fold a little bit better. So that's what I did. And I wasn't uh, uh, wasn't um, committed then to that really tall, skinny journal. Not that that would have been bad. That would have been, you know, that's like, like, a, like a traveler's notebook. I just wanted something a little bit wider. And so that's what I found myself doing. Uh, and that I think is going to be, um, is going to be really good. So I've assembled my signatures and one journal is going to have two signatures, uh, with six pages each. And the other one is going to have two signatures with five pages each. So each one is going to be kind of a substantial journal. Let me show you where we're going with the covers. Here's the Ritz box. And yeah, I know it looks backwards, but it's okay. I'm going to cover it. Uh, that's just the way I took the um, uh, the uh, the cardboard apart. And I just I, I spent a lot of time using my utility knife. I think I think mean, it's over at my cutting table now. But it's a utility knife. Here's one that's just like the one I've been using. Using this, using this, using this. Um, I, I think I've used it more today than I've maybe I ever have because I just have been cutting things to size, my signatures as well as my covers. So I think this is going to be a nice sturdy little cover uh, for um, for one journal. And I have some ideas. I'm, I think I'm going to cover this in the Amazon paper. 
um, because that just makes a really, really nice, uh, uh, reliable kind of a neutral uh, a neutral background for a, for a cover. So I think that's going to be okay. This one that's uh, just a little bit larger that I made out of the pizza box and the spine is a flyer from an insurance company that I you know, just kind of glued together there. I think the cover for that one, I'm going to use the sugar bag. And I just kind of, I just kind of like it. I just think it looks kind of homey and nice and it's clear that it's not a sugar bag. Um, but wait, it's a journal. Uh, it's something that otherwise would have been thrown away. And I just, I, we'll see how it works, but I just, um, I just really kind of like that. So that's the update on the assembly. Um, I used the little butter box to make a little booklet. You know, as I'm keeping notes to myself, uh, uh, I really like using little notebooks like this for ideas as they come to me. And so this is something that, that was just scraps that I put together using that butter box. So that's going to be nice to insert. I haven't done any decorating, obviously, for everything because I want to get the, the um, signature stitched in first and kind of cleaned up. Uh, but I ran across a couple things that I forgot to show you earlier uh, that I think you'll get a kick out of. This is something I'm going to put some paper on the back and have for a tiny little journaling card. <laughs> this is a parking, um, a, a receipt at a, a parking garage. Um, and it was from November, uh, October 17th. Uh, I was in downtown Portland. Uh, my, I was not driving. My friend Peg was, but I was writing with her and we were in downtown Portland that evening because we were seeing Barbara Kingsolver. We saw her. Oh my gosh. It was, she just was so wonderful. And so this ended up in my, um, uh, in my, my stack of papers for the week that I was, uh, that I was collecting. And I do not know how Barbara Kingsolver is going to figure into these journals, but you can bet that she's going to be in there somewhere. She has absolutely nothing to do with junk journaling, but she's a wonderful, inspiring creator of wonderful literature, and I just, I just think she's going to be in there. So anyway, um, that's kind of the update. I'm going to get into um, making my covers, and when you come back, uh, we'll have some decorating done. See you in a little bit. Okay, here we are for the big, uh, the big finale. Um, what I have to show you is some, I would say 90, 85, 90% uh, complete uh, journals. We're going to take them a little bit closer to the finish line. And um, I just wanted you to, uh, to see uh, this part of the process as well. I love how this turned out with this sugar bag. I put a thin coat of Mod Podge on it. I had to piece it on the back, so I just put something about vaccinations there uh, that came out of the AARP um, magazine. Um, but I just think that this just looks fun and unusual and kind of kooky, and I love it. And again, this is just going to be for me to use and... Um, lot, you know, just utility, utility, utility. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, it, it, a full trip, a flip through, uh, would bore you because it's just a lot of blank pages, but I'm going to kind of tell you how I got there. And then we're going to, um, we're going to add a few more things in Then I'm also going to show you the other journal. And if you stick around to the end, you're going to see what I put on the front of, uh, of that journal, because I'm really excited about that. So, Anyway, this is the one that uh, I just made out of the pizza box, uh, the inside uh, of, um, of, of the front and back cover. I used um, the inside of, a, of an envelope with that safety kind of printing on there. But I think I need a pocket here, so I think we'll go back to that. Again, lots of blank pages, because this is gonna be for me writing down my thoughts and my plans for YouTube. Uh, things and um, I, I just need a lot of space to journal but I want to have a few pockets uh, as well this is a little piece of an envelope that I put that butter wrapper on and it glued down really nicely with glue stick and I just glued that pocket down I found that as I was um, as I used so many of the junk mail envelopes that I had for my journaling space by opening those up it left me without the fodder, my traditional fodder for my tags and pockets. So I thought, oh gosh, I, I want a few tags. I want some pockets. How do I make those if I have used all of uh, uh, all of my material? And um, 
what I did is uh, this AARP uh, magazine that I had, I just started ripping out pages for the tags. Whoops. That there was all of these thin pages and I thought, oh, how am I gonna use those? This paper is so thin. Well, what I started doing for tags, and this is one example, is I started taking two or three pages from this AARP publication. And if you're not in the US, AARP is the American Association of Retired Persons, of which I am happily a member, pretty much retired anyway. And um, I just found some pages that had kind of a pleasant sort of image or maybe some interesting people. And I, 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 I glued all of them together. So we're just going to assume that that happened. And then I just fold them in thirds so that I have most of the sort of interesting image or interesting people um, taking up the majority of that real estate. And it's unlike any other kind of tag that I've ever made, but I think it really works kind of nicely. I glued everything together. I flipped it over and um, this one, I just had a, a piece of, a, of another inside of an envelope that had some blank paper so I can have my journaling spot there clipped off my edges and rounded my corners. And uh, I have a lot of little layers here I need to go back in and um, uh, and glue together. But that makes, it makes an okay um, tag. And there's really enough uh, firmness to it because there's like nine layers with something like this. And um, it's a nice way to use that thin kind of, kind of useless paper uh, that, uh, again, otherwise would have gone right in the trash. Uh, so I made a few tags like this. Uh, the topper, is, that's dryer sheets. <laughs> Remember I said I didn't know how I was going to use those dryer sheets? Well, I used one and I created these little, um, uh, these little tag toppers and I thought that that worked pretty well. So anyway, here's one tag and I'll, I'll probably add a few more in. Lots of blank pages, lots of future journaling space for me to write my ideas down. Uh, I like this pocket a lot. I don't know if you can see this. Can you tell that that's metallic? This is the top of that butter tub and I ran it through my embosser and gave it this interesting uh, sort of relief uh, pattern to it. And maybe here's another one of those uh, those tags made the same way that I showed you, the, the one I just showed you. And that, yeah, that might fit nicely in there. So I love it when journals have things coming out the top, and I'm starting to see that with this one. Um, these other pages are, oh, this is that that two, two printed sides glued face-to-face -face page. That's a nice thick page. There's just gonna be a lot of good planning space for me here. But why don't we glue one more pocket in here? And this is from the, the program from when I went to go see Barbara uh, King Solver and you will see her in the next journal. Whoops. And let's go ahead and glue this guy in there. I like this notion from this ad in that program at the lecture series that our local public TV station is a celebration of thinkers, makers, and doers. And that sort of speaks to the kind of celebratory feeling I think we all bring to, uh, bring to our work. And here's another cute little tag. And I just like that headline, there's a place for you here. This was another one of those pages. Uh, in this case, it was uh, again from, from the lecture series uh, program. And I just like the looks of that. And I folded the page up, put some journaling space on the back and there's a tag. This, um, this topper is um, my bagel, you know, from my bagel wrapper that you saw earlier. So I will continue putting um, uh, putting some a few pockets in here. Uh, I have a little stack of, of things that are going to be pockets here. I just kind of looked for, you know, photos of kind of interesting people. And they were, they were a little few and far, and far between. But there were some, you know, there were some. Who are those folks? Oh, they're at Cappy's. I think that's actually Cappy. Anyway, these are, these are, are um, much like with the tags. These are just sheets 
from a, uh, from a flyer or uh, uh, from the AARP publication that I, that I just fold it up like this and glued the, the, I used, I used quite a bit of glue stick, glued the layers together, punched a little divot to, um, there for the ones I put in. And there's a pocket out of very thin paper. It's not the way that I would like to always make paper, but for this exercise, for my wanting to use, um, uh, materials that came only into my life as trash, uh, or quickly turned into trash over the past week. Um, I think it, it's just fine. It's kind of funny. I was observing that this, if you choose to do an exercise like this, it just completely depends on what happens that week. I mean, we don't use a whole lot of sugar in the house, but Dan just happened to be refilling the canister because he had used some um, this past week. And so, you know, there was that sugar bag and boy, that was a gift. You know, that was just, that was really nice. It feels good. This is, this could only have happened this past week. It wouldn't happen again for another six months. If it was a week that we happened to get maybe a, a Viking cruise um, uh, advertisement in the mail, all of my stuff would be filled with beautiful beach scenes. And that didn't happen this week. I just have lots of AARP and medical <laughs> Medicare enrollment sorts of things. That's the age we're at and that's the time of uh, the time of year it is. Also, it's kind of funny, the junk, the junk mail is all from charitable stuff. Um, all of our utilities and, and almost all of our regular bill paying, our insurance and everything, we don't get the written statements in the mail. We haven't for years. We pay everything online. So the stuff that comes into the house is all the, 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 the charities that that we donate to and to, and it's probably the same for you as well. Even when you make your contributions online, as we do, they still send you the paper stuff. So anyway, um, glad to support the charities. I kind of wish they would go to paperless, but uh, maybe we'll get there. Anyway, that's it for this guy. Now let's look through. This is the one that was the Ritz Cracker Box. It looks very nude right now, but we're going to change that in just a moment. I will show you inside. Oh, look. It's Barbara Kingsolver. I told you I was going to give her a place in these, in this journal experience somewhere. Yes, she looks a little big. Yes, it's a little startling to open uh, up and see Barbara Kingsolver. But my gosh, she's just a wonderful author. And um, I'm glad to have her there. So thank you, Barbara, for joining in this whole journal thing. Um, on my, you can see that I, I used my envelopes folded, um, uh, the counterintuitive way and I'm really glad that I ended up with that orientation because I've it gave me the shape and the space that I really wanted. I, I'm leaving some of this uh, some of the print because I can write around that and I kind of like seeing you know this jazz radio uh, represented there. Here is um, a uh, another pocket that I put in. I don't know that I have a tag right now that belongs in there. I'll show you a couple of other funny uh, things though. Look, there's the Ritz bits. Can I put a tag in there? This one might be a little bit too big, but you can see how this pocket will just sort of fit. I'll make a smaller tag to go into this pocket. Or maybe I could put this in there. This is the little, um, scrap pad that I made out of the butter box and I just put some uh, put a cover on it and cut out the headline plans this paper clip was not part of my trash I just put it in there so anyway so I think maybe I'll tuck that little thing in there I might put put it somewhere else but I just wanted you to kind of see how this was shaping up and here's one of this journaling space is the back of our Costco receipts. I can journal on there. A little bit of a headline. Amazon paper. This is the last vestiges of the sugar bag that I put, um, uh, put some blank paper on to journal on. There's the rest of the sugar bag. Boy, that thing sure came in handy. What a gift that was. And then just a little pocket in the back. There's my tomato paste as a tag. And there's that twisty tie. 
So anyway, this is the most most of this stuff. I'll go in and I'll I'll, I'll add a few, a few more pockets. Um, I probably need more pockets than tags because I I imagine when I'm using these journals, I'm going to be writing things down on scratch paper elsewhere and sticking sticking them in here as notes to myself that I can remember um, if I'm getting ideas when I'm not around these journals. But anyway, this is what I would like to show you. Um, I have the last little bit of um, that butter tub because I thought this was that the, the foil on the top of the butter tub. I thought this is so cool. I kind of don't want to throw it away. So I was thinking that maybe that could go on the cover. And you may recall that I showed you a, a, a lid from Home Canned Tomatoes. This is the back of it. And I mod podged a little paper and a headline on there. And I thought, I like that. I think that belongs on the cover. When I first looked at that, that lid, and again, that's different from the screw-on rings or the, the mason jars that are also part of the home canned assembly. Those we reuse, but those sealable lids, you know, you, you use them once. Um, I really wanted to find a way to use this and because it does have some depth it almost needed it, it almost couldn't go inside because it would have been too bulky but I thought how can I have it look appropriate for the front of a journal and I used um, an illustration from the front of that green living flyer that um, uh, that we were tossing out and um, I just, I, I cut that, maybe I have some other pieces of it here. This is, you know, this was part of it. But I just, I, I mod, put some Mod Podge down uh, because I was letting myself use glue. I put Mod Podge into the glue category. And um, and I just put a, put a coat, some coating down on the lid, put the paper down, kind of molded it into that sort of bowl shape, and then put a very thin layer of Mod Podge on top. I let it dry, and then I put this little headline down. Uh, with another very thin coat of Mod Podge, and it's completely dry now. So anyway, let's finish this fun little exercise with this. I liked sort of having those there together, but I thought with that kind of amber color there, I thought I had a bunch of scraps of this stuff because all of my Audubon Society um, mail had this amber colored um, paper, and it's uh, in its its envelopes. So I kind of thought I would like to add some of that in there. So let's get our background down first and I'll trim this down to be a little a little bit better. I think maybe I'll I don't know if this is going to work. I should have thought of this beforehand. Yep. There we go. And maybe I'll come down here and let me. Good, yeah, I wanted this just a little bit longer. Although now that I'm so close, why don't I make this about the same length so it doesn't look like it's a complete mistake. And let's round off that corner. There we go. I would use the other side, except that has the adhesive on it. So I'm gonna put this down and some of it might show. And I'm okay if it does. I actually really kind of like that because it does show that it's a scrap. Yeah, I'm liking that. Okay, so I'm gonna have these lined up. I'm gonna use my Fabri-Tac. Um, this, um, on this Ritz box, I did cover with Amazon packaging and it laid down nice and smooth. And then I um, put a, um, a, again, a thin layer of Mod Podge like I did uh, with the others and it gave it some really kind of neat wrinkles. So, you know, you just kind of never know how moisture is going to react with some of our materials, but that chose to give, give some sort of elephant-like 
<laughs> wrinkles um, to that Amazon packaging on top of that Ritz Cracker box. And it looks kind of neat. All right, let's see if I can get this at a decent spot. I'm using the Fabri-Tac because this is a metal material and Fabri-Tac is the, the strongest thing I have that's gonna hold an unconventional material like that. So for this, actually, I think I'm gonna use the Fabri-Tac again, even for the paper, because this Mod Podge has created sort of a, um, a slick surface there. I wanna make certain that um, it's gonna be something that's gonna adhere, especially since it is on the cover and it's gonna get a fair amount of wear. I like the fact this is all gonna be a little bit off center. And there we go. And I love that little bit of zip code that's just sticking out, just like a little tail under there. I think that looks terrific. It may not be everybody's tastes, but for this kind of journal, I think it's gonna be mine. I'm so glad that I had this piece of, um, of the butter tub uh, foil left over from making that pocket. I made the pocket first and this was just sitting around in the scrap. And then when I was looking earlier for what to, um, the, how, how to orient uh, this little plate on the, on the front of this journal, I thought it needs to be grounded in some way. And I tried it with, you know, some other pieces of paper and then I ran across this and I thought, yeah, that's it. So let's, Get going with this, and this is going to be the final act for this exciting episode. There we go. That's straight. There it is now. Now I'm going to put this under a weight and um, I'm going to let it sit probably a day or two because I really want it, that to appear nicely. So anyway, guys, at the beginning of this video, you looked at all my trash and now look, it's all usable. Um, I don't know which, which journal I'm going to use first because I like them both. Uh, that will be something I will puzzle over and I will uh, think about. But all of this is just from a week's worth of trash. And um, I'd be curious to know if you do something similar. It is a really, really fun creative challenge. I have to say I'm missing my other supplies. I'm missing uh, my book pages and uh, uh, my little bits of lace and my, um, and my inks. But it was really good for a couple of days. And this is all it took me was a couple of days. It was good for me to just really focus on this very narrow um, set of, uh, of materials and to use things that came free into my life and um, uh, are going to, you know, help me have, have a few memories like Barbara Kill Kingsolver. Oh my gosh, she's so wonderful. Um, but, but more importantly, to have a place where I can really work on planning and, and, and you know, growing ideas for some of the videos that I want to share with you. So that's it. Hey, thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.